This is gridlock. You're looking at gridlock, a, a traffic jam. There are too many cars and too many trucks on these streets, and so nothing is moving, or what is moving is moving very slowly. This is a metaphor we've chosen for when Republicans and Democrats in Congress can't come to agreement, and so Congress ends up doing nothing. Gridlock, we call it. And every time we call it that, we think of a traffic jam where nothing moves. And this is a mistake. It is a metaphor that leads us awry every time. When Congress can't get anything done, things do happen. It just means they happen outside of Congress. They go down the city streets. Let me give you an example. No Child Left Behind. The big school reform bill passed by President George W. Bush with the support of conservative Republicans like John Boehner and liberal Democrats like Senator Ted Kennedy and Congressman George Miller. No Child Left Behind. Uh, no Child Left Behind technically expired in 2007. It is a zombie bill. But no one really did anything about it. They didn't reauthorize it or overhaul it. They just kept appropriating money. And so the outdated provisions of this out-of-touch bill are beginning to strangle the education system. It says that 100%. 100% of school districts need to meet tough proficiency goals in reading and math in 2014 or they lose tons of money. And that goal will not be met. We've known that for years that these school districts will not hit those targets. And that means they're going to lose tons of money. Those kids will lose tons of money. And so we needed to do something. But, you know... Congress. So the Obama administration began giving out waivers, just direct waivers, telling almost 40 states that they're letting them out of No Child Left Behind as long as they agree to meet certain other kinds of quality targets. And today, they took another step. And after rejecting California's request for a waiver, they said yes to eight individual school districts in California, Sacramento, Fresno, Long Beach, L.A., Oakland, San Francisco, Sanger, and Santa Ana. That's the first time that's ever happened. With Congress doing nothing, this governing by waiver is becoming almost common. The Obama, administration, uh, yeah. the Obama administration decided to just delay parts of Obamacare for a year because they didn't think they would work to implement this year. After the DREAM Act failed in Congress, the Obama administration decided to stop prosecuting undocumented immigrants who fit DREAMer characteristics. They basically just implemented the law by executive fiat. To Republicans in Congress, this is lawlessness. This is the executive branch stepping out of its bounds and around Congress. But to Democrats in Congress, it's the only way for the executive branch to govern amidst a Republican Party that refuses to work with this White House. But this is why congressional gridlock is not like traffic gridlock. Things move. Laws get made. They just aren't made in the part of the government that's supposed to be making them. Joining me now is Maddie Duppler, Director of Budget and Regulatory Policy for Americans for Tax Reform, and Norm Ornstein, Resident Scholar at the American Enterprise Institute and co-author of the book, The Broken Branch, How Congress is Failing America and How to Get It Back on Track. Thank you both for being here. Yeah, thank you. And, and Maddie, I, I want to start with you. Mm -hmm. What do you think of, of, of these waivers? I, I imagine you're not a huge fan of them. <laughs> well, it's interesting you point out kind of the other examples. Just as you mentioned, mm -hmm. Republicans are pointing to this unilateral action by the executive branch, and uh, we are thinking on the right that this is this is problematic and I think that the same thing was happening on the left during the George W. Bush years saying anything that George W. Bush did without congressional approval was also the same kind of overreach in the executive and the executive branch so it's problematic coming from Obama now you mentioned dreamers you mentioned Obamacare these are all uh, agenda items that the president decided to execute because he didn't want to involve Congress because he couldn't necessarily uh, promote his agenda through Congress that's not the way that we make laws in this country and we can't pretend that just because the president wants to do something that another branch of government doesn't, that that gives him the authority to do so. So, Norm, you're, you're a congressional scholar. You've studied relationships between the executive branch and Congress for a long time. Is what we're seeing here in terms of this governing by waiver unprecedented, or is it a, a, a more normal thing? It's a more normal thing, although taken to a different level. I mean, I get very amused when I see the back and forth on this, because I remember Wall Street Journal editorials uh, back during the Reagan and Bush years, which basically made it clear that there was no Article I in the Constitution. It all started with the president. Somehow this has been lost in history, and now you're getting uh, indignation over things that they had deeply supported in the past. Uh, I don't like to see, I didn't like to see in the Bush years all kinds of signing statements that basically said, I've signed this law, but I'm not going to implement major parts of it. And I think presidents can go too far on that front. But in fact, uh, the larger point here is Congress is willfully not acting. They're trying to sabotage existing laws, and there isn't a whole lot a president can do except to issue waivers. And in many cases in the past, conservatives have supported waivers when it gives power to the states and governors to do things. And that's partly what we're seeing here. But I do think, Manny, one of the interesting things here, it's not that Congress isn't is choosing 
deciding not to act, right? You, right. The, the way you said it and the way, Norm, you actually said it too, is that Congress is kind of deciding not to act. But, but they're not doing that. They're not being able to make any decision at all because there's, of course, a flip side, right? If Republicans controlled Congress, they could take away the authority on mm -hmm. these things. I mean, Congress would clearly have the power to do that. But the Obama administration's actions are being protected by Democrats in Congress who right. run the Senate and obviously have yeah. a tiny, itsy-bitsy little bit of power in the House. Yeah. So, I mean, you do have that piece as well. Like, this, right. is, this is this collision between them where neither side can actually stop the Obama administration or help them. I think that's a good way to put it. And as Norm alluded to, both sides are responsible for us continuing to cede power to the president. Uh, but I think Obamacare and No Child Left Behind are instructive in this instance. You know, No Child Left Behind, it's not just that Congress is unwilling to act. The House has passed a bill that would reform No Child Left Behind, a holistic package, <clears throat> excuse me, in July. The Senate hasn't acted on anything. They haven't even uh, marked up anything in committee. So that shows you what side is actually moving on things. But same thing with Obamacare. You know, the idea that we can have an employer mandate wave, but not the individual side of things seems ludicrous to those of us who think that, well, if the law is going to work, you should probably have the entire law go into effect rather than picking and choosing where you think it might be successful. But again, that motion hasn't been taken up by the Senate, uh, by the Democrat-controlled Senate, even though Republicans, uh, one of the last things they did when they were in town was pass a waiver for American families as well. You know, I, I think we always are going to find with divided government uh, a, a back and forth and a give and take. And even with united government at times, we've had, uh, when there were Democratic presidents, Democratic Congresses assert their authority. But usually they work things out on most issues and they find through give and take. This is different. Uh, this is different than what we've seen before. This is an all out war. Uh, we've seen DEFCON 1 raised way too many times and we're heading towards something that's not gridlock but much more like a massive pile up on 405. I want to talk to you about the massive pile up when we come back.